Moments ago Trump and Saudi King showed up at Toby Keith's concert and did the unimaginable. It's not every day in Saudi Arabia that Toby Keith performs a massive concert for the royal family. Now, couple that with President Donald Trump's first trip, and you have the recipe for something great. So Toby Keith was busy singing his hits in a concert hall packed full of his Saudi fans. He knew the president was in town, but he wasn't expecting to see him just yet. That's when Donald Trump and the Saudi king rolled into the concert in a golf cart. Their cart rolled right across the atrium in the middle of the show followed by Ayanka and Jared in a different cart behind him. With so many powerful players, there was no time to stop in public. The two golf carts sped off into the unknown, presumably to watch the concert from a secret, royal-only location or return to the office and work on changing the world. Toby Keith and Trump seem to have a very special relationship. Maybe you all remember this great inauguration moment. Pretty great. Apparently, the Saudis are fans of country music too. Well, as long as it's not about alcohol or women driving pickup trucks that are. Anyways, the leftist media is busy trying to smear the president. Again. So it lands on us to help share out stories like this to all our family and friends and set the record straight. This is the real Donald Trump, a hardworking, a respected diplomat. Thank you for reading us. Us. Top Obama official Samantha Power gets brutal lesson in self-awareness after criticizing Trump's Saudi arms deal. Samantha Power, who served as U.S. ambassador to the United Nations under former President Barack Obama received a lesson in self-awareness over the weekend. Power took to her Twitter account Saturday to criticize a $110 billion arms deal that President Donald Trump inked with Saudi Arabian King Salman on the same day. Power seemed to oppose the deal arguing that Trump just agreed to provide arms to a country that has killed innocent civilians in Yemen, a country that borders Saudi Arabia to its south. For a country whose attacks on civilians in Yemen and inability to learn from mistakes, have been devastating to human life," Power wrote on Twitter. In her tweet, Power appeared to appeal to a moral high road, but Twitter users weren't so convinced. In fact, the response to Power's tweet was filled mostly with tweets slamming the former Obama official for being a hypocrite. Not only did Obama ink many arms deals with the Saudis, one user pointed out, but the Obama administration also watched hundreds of thousands of Syrians die and did nothing. Indeed, the Obama administration offered the Saudis more than $115 billion worth of arms during their eight years in the White House, almost $5 billion more than the deal that Trump inked Saturday, according to a Reuters report last year. Last year, President Trump just exploded forced Paul Ryan to admit. It is very certain that President Trump, and whatever remains of America, are both tired of Paul Ryan's absence of initiative, and in particular, shenanigans. As Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan still can't seem to give a bill to completely replace and repeal Obamacare, despite the fact that he has a Republican leading House, trailed by a Republican leading Senate, and a Republican president who is prepared to sign a bill into law. We don't precisely know the inspirations driving Paul Ryan's clear dawdling or failure to assemble his rush, yet we do know precisely how Americans feel about Paul Ryan and the Congress he is leading. The latest surveys have Paul Ryan's positivity at an incredible 22 percent. As a result of his poor surveying, he is dragging Congress with him into the ground. From the Hill Americans' views of Speaker Paul Ryan, Republican Wisconsin and the Republican Congress are in decline, according to a new poll. The latest Wall Street Journal, NBC News poll published Monday found that 40 percent of voters have a negative view of the Wisconsin Republican, compared with 22 percent who have a positive view. The 18-point gap represents a major shift since February, when unfavorable opinions of the Speaker outweighed positive ones by just one percentage point. The growing dissatisfaction with Ryan coincides with increasing disapproval of the Republican-controlled Congress. Nearly three-fourths of Americans in the poll disapprove of the performance of Congress. The disapproval rating has spiked 12 points since February. Only one-fifth of Americans approve of Congress's performance, a nine-point decline since February. 
The new poll follows House Republicans' failed attempt to pass legislation to repeal and replace Obamacare. Lack of support for the bill forced Ryan to pull the legislation before a scheduled vote. Republicans have not given up on passing a health care bill but are now faced with a pressing deadline to fund the government. If a funding bill is not passed by the end of Friday, the government will shut down. Maybe Speaker Ryan will endeavor to seem like the legend in keeping the administration from being closed down, notwithstanding, with his previous history of inability to pass a bill, my cash is going toward that reality that assuming undoubtedly, we keep a legislature closed down, it will be of President Trump's doing, not the Speaker's. Maybe additionally, Paul Ryan ought to consider leaving, as I'm certain there are more skilled Republicans who might have the capacity to pass an annulment of Obamacare a financial plan, in addition to other things. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comments section below. Share the truth, be patriots. Thank you for reading, for reading, sweet revenge. The biggest mole in the White House finally busted, President Trump just caught Obama's Muslim spy. At the point when another president assumes control, significant changes happen in top authority positions. In any case, that doesn't imply that there are not remainders from the past organizations whose loyalties stay with their first supervisor. The consequence of this is leaks of confidential data and arrangements are extremely conceivable, if not think. It doesn't take excessively creative ability to concoct the hypothesis that maybe Mr. Obama still has a few contacts inside the White House who can channel data to him. Things being what they are not a hypothesis. Obama's spy Sahar Nooruzade was recently discovered and fired. We know the arrangement Obama cut with the Iranians was an awful one. Truth be told it's to a greater degree a capitulation than an arrangement. Turns out that one of the draftsmen of the arrangement was all the while working in the Trump White House, this Nooruzade woman. Sahar Nooruzade, the Iran director for former President Obama's National Security Council, NSC has burrowed into the government under President Trump. She's now in charge of Iran and the Persian Gulf region on the policy planning staff at the State Department, reported Jordan Schachtel, of the Conservative Review. It deteriorates and shows only the kind of individuals with whom Mr. Obama encircle himself. No ruse it is a former employee of the National Iranian American Council, NIAC, a nonprofit that is accused of being a lobbying group for the Iranian regime. NIAC's current president, Trita Parsi, has long held close relationships with top officials in the Tehran dictatorship. She shows up very pleased with her double travel permits, American and Iranian. That by itself ought to set off alerts. Obviously, Mr. Obama thought it was a benefit. Furthermore, perhaps it was given his objectives. Be that as it may. Do you truly need somebody with an Iranian international ID consulting with Iran for our benefit? She had top-level security clearance under the Obama administration, and if anything, Sahar's activities under Obama proved that he was well aware of the collusion going on with Iran. In fact, it points to his collusion in undermining the United States to benefit Iran. While we don't know about all the harm this individual has done to our country, we do realize that the previous Obama staff member is no longer at the White House. Trump fired her. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comments section below. Share the truth, be patriots. Thank you for reading, you for reading, MSNBC calls for ISIS to bomb Trump Tower. Watch what happens next. In one of the most disgusting rants we've seen yet, MSNBC counterterrorism analyst Malcolm Nance just called for ISIS to blow up Trump Tower. At least, that's how the tweet was interpreted by many angry patriots throughout the country. Nance tweeted a photo of the Trump Tower in Istanbul, with the caption, This is my nominee for first ISIS suicide bombing of a Trump property. Trump Tower Istanbul, he continued. After seeing Trump's congrats to Erdogan for winning his rigged election I'm worried RFP, foreign policy, is directed by property. Even some fans of Nance warned that he had taken things too far. Be careful. It sounds like you're encouraging it. They'll jump all over that, one Twitter user wrote. Not surprisingly, Nance quickly deleted the post.
but the damage was already done as far as we're concerned. This is just more evidence that MSNBC has it out for President Trump. Nance's commentary is careless and dangerous, and it needs to stop. Stop. Anderson Cooper finally apologizes for terrible treatment of President Trump. CNN host Anderson Cooper apologized for a crude remark directed at President Trump supporter Jeffrey Lord during his show on Friday, calling his comment unprofessional. During a segment on AC360, Cooper verbally sparred with Lord, a CNN political commentator, over revelations that Trump reportedly told Russian officials that former FBI Director James Comey is a nut job who was adding pressure to the ongoing investigation of possible interference in the 2016 election. Clearly frustrated with Lord's response to the matter, Cooper interrupted the conservative pundit and interjected with a not so subtle jab. If he took a dump on his desk, you would defend it, Cooper told Lord. I don't know what he would do that you would not defend. You are a loyal guy, I think that speaks well of you, he added as Lord, who initially laughed at Cooper's remark, looked on. Cooper later provided an apology both on air and on Twitter. I regret the crude sentence I spoke earlier tonight and followed it up by apologizing on air, the CNN host tweeted. It was unprofessional. I am genuinely sorry. What do you think about this comment below? Comment below.